dear students, today we will talk about the structure of atmosphere of the earth, means we will discuss few important aspects about uh, various characteristics about the atmosphere of the earth, what is the chemical composition of the atmosphere, how does the pressure, temperature vary with respect to height in the atmosphere, things like that. Okay. So, what is atmosphere to begin with, I mean how do you define atmosphere? So, atmosphere is the envelope of gases that surrounds the planet, that surrounds the earth itself and it starts from the ground and it extends to several hundreds of kilometers into the space and atmosphere is the, is the entity or the system which makes the earth habitable. So, it supports life, life exists on this planet just because there is atmosphere on this planet and eventually atmosphere or all these gases, the gas envelope is surrounded, surrounding the earth or is held by the earth's gravitational pull. So, earth's gravity is what uh, keeps the atmosphere bound to the earth. Okay, so, there are uh, different gases in atmosphere, we will talk about what are the different gases in that are present in the atmosphere since the gas envelope, right. Then we will look at the vertical temp, vertical profile of temperature and pressure in the atmosphere. That means, we will look at how the variation, how the pressure or temperature vary with respect to height, okay. And we will define what are the different layers of atmosphere and how is each layer different from the, from the remaining and what are the what are the basic characteristics of each layer, stuff like that, okay. Then, so what is atmosphere, we have defined what is atmosphere. So, atmospheric gases, so in this picture what you see, the, the blue uh, layer that you see surrounding the planet or above the, above the ground is the atmosphere, this is, this, this is generally called as atmospheric limb. Okay, so, we know that 99 percent of all the gases including water vapor, all this, uh, the entire mass of atmosphere extends only up to 30 kilometers above the earth's surface. So, above, above the 30, 30 kilometers also there is, there is a lot of gas which generally constitute not more than 1 percent of the entire mass of atmosphere, okay. So, to a very, a very easy to remember or uh, to a very well established fact, we can always say that 99 percent of the atmospheric gases exist within the first 30 kilometers of the atmosphere, that is it. So, the remaining atmosphere is, is scattered or diffused over the entire let us say 700 kilometers, okay. And it is also very important to note that all the weather patterns, all the weather systems that you see around yourself or anywhere in the planet, on the planet result only in the first 10 kilometers, 10 to 15 kilometers to be precise. So, all the weather happens in the first 10 to 15 kilometers and the entire 99 percent of the atmosphere is below 30 kilometers limit. So, this is, these two are the very important uh, characteristics of the atmosphere. So, we, we can always say how much atmosphere exists. I mean, there is a lot of atmospheric envelope, of course, the gaseous envelope is enormously large, huge it is, but the weight of 99 percent of the atmosphere is only up to 30 per 30 kilometers from the ground. Then the second thing is atmosphere is home to all the gases, nitrogen, oxygen, argon, every other gas that we can imagine, right. Now, atmosphere is the place where all the weather happens. You see rains, you see thunderstorms, you see, you see lightning, you see so many things, you see clouds, right. All these things happen in the first 10 kilometers, nothing happens after let us say 15 kilometers, no, no weather system will develop beyond 15 kilometers generally, okay. Now, if you look at the composition of the atmosphere, I mean what, what are the different gases that you can find in atmosphere of the earth. So, it is nitrogen which is 78 percent, oxygen which is 21 percent, water vapor is 0 to 4 percent by volume. And this 0 to 4 percent because water vapor, the content of water vapor the availability of water molecules, H2O molecules as water vapor is dependent on many factors. So, 0 to 4 percent is not uh, at, at a particular place. So, at the tropics due to the excessive heating, there is more water vapor. So, maybe probably it, it will be up to 2 to 3 percent and near the poles where it is dry that the water vapor will be nearly 0. Uh, so, it depends. I mean, so this is not uh, so something very important for us to, for us to think about. 
but generally the other gases let us say carbon dioxide is 0 0.037 percent and the remaining gases all of all of which will constitute the rest of the percentage make up the rest. So, if you look into the detailed chemical composition of the atmosphere of the earth what you realize is that nitrogen, oxygen, argon and carbon dioxide itself may make up to 99.998 percent of the atmosphere. The, the minor species the trace species are always measured or always quantified in parts per million uh, concentrations. So, they, they are very very small in numbers of course, but, but still there is over the entire volume of the atmosphere they, they are not to be neglected anyway right. But one thing that you should always remember is 78 percent of the atmosphere is nitrogen and 21 percent of the atmosphere is oxygen and the, the major species apart from nitrogen and oxygen are argon and carbon dioxide ok. Then what happens is there is a lot of change in the atmosphere the chemical species but generally uh, nitrogen and oxygen concentrations generally do not experience a lot of change over the period of lot of time. That means oxygen and nitrogen concentrations experience little change, but carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxides, chlorofluorocarbons, greenhouse gases experience I mean huge change over a period of time. I mean, that means we talk about CO2 levels increasing a lot. I mean so that means that there is a lot of variability in the CO2 levels there is a lot of variability that means over a period of time the CO2 levels can go from a small number to a very large number. So, this figure indicates the CO2 concentrations over the past let us say to, uh, starting from 1955 up till the year of 2005. So, what you see is the concent the concentration of CO2 is steadily increasing. So, it is a steady increase. So, we always we have always seen that CO2 levels are always accompanied by increase in the temperatures. So, this is the CO2 levels are the main reason for the uh, for the increase of uh, uh, heat or average temperature of the planet that means we are talking about the global warming right. So, it is basically so now we see that atmosphere of the earth is composed of nitrogen and oxygen to a majority and to by CO2 to a very small number, but CO2 stability or CO2's variation or the anthropogenic effects that means the humans intervention in the uh, in, in increasing or humans contribution in increasing the CO2 levels makes it a potential candidate to rise the can rise the temperature or the average temperature of the earth ok. Now, so this this effect is generally called as the greenhouse effect atmospheric greenhouse effect. So, the warming of the atmosphere by its absorption and emitting infrared radiation while allowing short wave radiation to pass through this is called as the greenhouse effect. So, the gases mainly responsible for the atmo atmospheric greenhouse effect are water vapor and carbon dioxide. So, H 2 O and C O 2 have vibrational or I R active bands ok. Then what the point is the point is this they will trap the outgoing infrared radiation that means which is also called as the long wave radiation. So, they will not allow the long wave radiation to go out and they will allow the short wave radiation the short wave radiation to enter the atmosphere. The short wave radiation is is the radiation with smaller value of lambda that means the ultraviolet visible will will fall I mean not really visible, but the ultraviolet radiation is, is, is a candidate for short wave radiation and long wave radiation is generally the infrared radiation. So, these two molecules would not interact with with ultraviolet they they interact one only with the infrared radiation because they are molecules. So, it is naturally understandable right. Now, apart from gases atmosphere is also home to several particles or let us say suspend suspended particles. So, in addition to invisible gases like nitrogen, oxygen and argon atmosphere also has tiny suspended particles it has very small tiny suspended particles. Uh, human and natural activities displace tiny salts, soil particles and ash particles uh, to be displaced into the atmosphere as aerosol particles ok. And apart from this as sulphur, nitrogen oxides and hydrocarbons as pollutants. So, human activities are the ones which will uh, which will. So, human activities will throw a lot of pollutants into the atmosphere of the earth they they remain there for a lot of time for a very very for a very longer amount of time uh, they remain there and uh, 
natural activities such as volcanic eruptions will will deposit or will uh, <coughs> will will pump a lot of uh, particles such as uh, ash particles into the atmosphere so these particles are called as can be called as aerosol particles so atmosphere also has a tremendous population of these aerosol particles in it aerosol particles are generally helpful or they are beneficial for many many things but the pollutants are not uh, beneficial rather they are hazardous for the uh, human kind so aerosols are beneficial in the sense that aerosols act as condensation nuclei for the clouds to form right so without the aerosols you you can expect you cannot expect the clouds to form that's a discussion we will get there sometime okay so when we discuss about the cloud physics probably we, i will explain more about this so the point is the atmosphere is is home to gases the gaseous envelope is atmosphere apart from these invisible gases there are a lot of particles which are suspended in the in the atmosphere and the height at which these particles are suspended will decide the amount of time these particles will spend at in the atmosphere so it's naturally expected that if the particle is heavier it will be pulled by the gravity and it will reach the surface but what what has been seen is that the height to which these particles go will decide the the amount of time that it spends there now one very important parameter when you talk about atmosphere is called as pressure so pressure by definition is force per unit area so the pressure by definition is the amount of force per unit area right now so if you want to calculate the atmospheric pressure you calculate the surface area of earth the entire surface area of the earth the force is nothing but the entire mass of the atmosphere multiplied by the gravity so this is the force that the atmosphere exerts on the planet on the surface and what is the total area this at uh, this atmosphere exerting this pressure is the total surface area of the planet itself right now if you calculate this if you put numbers into this so area can be calculated by knowing the radius of the planet so radius of the planet is nothing but uh, 6400 kilometers right so you know all these numbers it's not a big thing so the force is the is the weight that atmosphere exerts on the planet surface so you can calculate the pressure so gravity pulls the gases towards the earth surface and the whole column of gases weighs nearly 14.7 psi at the sea level so which is equivalent to a pressure of 1013.25 millibar so this is a number that you want to remember for as long as for the rest of your life so this is a very important number what is the pressure what is the surface pressure is 1013.25 millibar so basically the idea is the amount of force exerted over in a surface area is called as air pressure and the air density and talking about the density air density is the number of molecules in a given surf, given space let's say density is the number of atoms sorry uh, sorry molecules atoms or molecules per unit sir per unit volume let's say okay now if you see how does the pressure or uh, density vary with respect to height what you see is let's say on the uh, on the y axis you have the altitude that means you have the height in kilometers and on the x axis you have the value of pressure or density pressure is given in the red curve and the density is given by the blue curve so what you see is so this is the ground right zero is the ground so what you see is there are more molecules up obviously more number of molecules are held by the gravity uh, near the surface so more number of molecules more is the amount of force that ex that they exert on the surface more is the force more will be the pressure right but when you see when you go up what you see is the number of molecules when you go up the number of molecules are decreasing that means the density is large here and density is very small here equivalent to density the pressure is very high near the surface and pressure decreases as you go up so that is what is being shown in this figure where you see that the density and the pressure vary in a similar fashion they vary very much similarly that they decrease that the pressure and density decreases as we go up okay let's talk more about this variation okay now if you draw this variation what you will realize is that the log of pressure drops linearly with height below 100 km so that was an exponential curve if you take a log 
then you will get a linear curve of course. So, what has been written is that log of pressure at any height drops linearly. So, this is a linear variation with respect to pressure at the ground with a slope. Right. So, you, multi you multiply by 1 by 2.303 and that what you will realize is that pressure at any height z with respect to pressure at the gr ground level is equal to minus 2.3 times B z. So, what you will see is that log of ln of P z by P 0 is minus 2.3 B z. That means that pressure at any height z depends exponentially with respect to pressure at ground level. That means, so it is an exponential growth from the uh, top. So, pressure drops exponentially and by a factor of E by passing through a distance of i. So, here you define capital H as the scale height. Scale height is the length dimension by traveling which distance pressure will decay to 1 by eth of its original value. So, at the ground it is if it is something something let us say x after traveling a distance of h into the atmosphere the pressure's value will be x by e that is it. Okay. So, we can also say that the density also varies in a similar way. So, that the density is rho naught times exponential minus h by capital H. So, h is the height at which you are trying to find out find out the pressure capital H is the scale height. We will derive a relation for the scale height as it is. Okay. So, few important aspects about the pressure profile let us say. So, if you see this figure what you see is on the x axis you have the pressure and on the y axis you have the altitude. So, atmospheric pressure decreases rapidly with height it decreases uh, very fast I mean exponential growth or exponential decay is very fast we know that. Climbing to an altitude of nearly 5.5 kilometers itself the pressure will be almost half like 1013.25 is the pressure at the ground right 1013.25. 25 millibar is the pressure on the ground. So, this is the amount of force that exerts that atmosphere exerts on the surface. Okay. Now, with this reference what you will realize is that at an altitude of 5.5 kilometers itself this pressure nearly drops to 500 mb I mean half of the pressure at the surface. So, that means that it that means that if it is half that means half of the the entire molecules of the atmosphere exist below 5.5 kilometers right. So, straightforward and near the sea surface the atmospheric pressure decreases rapidly and at high levels it decreases more slowly. That means, the decay that is the nature of exponential variation. So, it will be very fast in the beginning and it will, it will not be so fast it will be slow afterwards. Okay. The top of Mount Everest let us say for, for reference the pressure is nearly 300 millibar. So, that means, one third of pressure itself it is it is nearly at 10 kilometers it is nearly uh, one third. That means, so the pressure has dropped to half at 5 kilometers and it has dropped to one third at 10 kilometers. That means, so you see here, so this is 1 here, it has dropped to one, uh, one half of let us say this is x, half of x and one third of x. That means, the, this decay is fast and this decay is not as fast as this. right? as simple at nearly 50 kilometers the air pressure is 1 mb that means the entire then the total number of molecules of the atmosphere are existing below 50 kilometers right okay so one thing that you have to understand from this is that pressure decays exponentially as you go up and uh, the decay of pressure is very fast in the beginning and it will be slow afterwards okay so, to summarize this discussion about the about this what you can say is uh, the atmosphere is remarkably thin in comparison to the scale of the earth of course, it is the 50 percent of the atmosphere is nearly is below 5.5 kilometers, 90 percent is below 16 kilometers and 99 percent is below 30 kilometers and 99.9 percent of the atmosphere is below 50 kilometers and we generally take an example take the atmosphere to exist up to at least 840 kilometers this is not a uh, st standard number anyway. Okay. That means, that everything uh, the 0 0.1 percent of the atmosphere is what exists after 50 kilometers that is it. So, the entire atmosphere the 
entire atmosphere is existing below 100 uh, below 50 kilometers okay now th the atmosphere is actually a thin wiener i mean uh, the earth so to put to reference that most the, the radius of the earth is nearly 6400 kilometers which is let's say 3840 miles so nearly all the atmosphere so with this numbers let's see if you put this in comparison with the radius of the earth nearly all of the atmosphere is contained in the layer from the surface to 100 kilometers okay and uh, most importantly the habitable atmosphere is only within the first 5 kilometers we should remember this so that means that if you put habitable atmosphere for reference with respect to 6400 kilometers you will realize that it's only 1 by 1 to 8 zero th of the distance of to the earth center so you cannot even say that it is uh, like a peel on the orange the atmosphere is like a peel on the orange where, or where the orange is the earth no it's not like that i mean it's much thinner than that so tomorrow we will discuss about the layers of atmosphere so today we have seen just uh, the basic structure of the atmosphere of the earth what are the different uh, chemical uh, species that exist in the atmosphere of the earth so tomorrow we will see uh, uh, how does the atmospheric uh, temperature vary with respect to height and based on this variation we will try to identify different layers of the atmosphere and uh, what are the salient features of these different layers of the atmosphere of the earth. Thank you.